Hey, what's up, Jake? Yeah, um, just wanted to touch base real quick. I'm getting ready to record my next episode. Uh, again, going to be talking about some running backs that might have some sneaky value right now, some sleepers prior to the draft. But just wanted to give you a heads up. Ronald Jones is going to be... This might be the episode that gets me fired. Hey, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Headliners. And in this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about some running backs that right now have some pretty good value prior to the draft. However, maybe we're not talking about them nearly as much as we should be. I already gave one of them away. We'll talk about him in a minute, but I got a couple of others as well. But again, just to kind of reiterate, these are guys with good value right now prior to the NFL draft. Now, after the draft happens, if any of these teams were to pick up a running back, a lot of this could end up changing. But with the draft only a few days away, I think it it bears in mind to just to just remember these guys. Remember what they've possibly done for you in the past, what they could do for you in 2020. But again, have some sleepers, quote, way too early sleepers here for you to take a look at. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's talk about some of these guys. Now, the first guy I want to talk about is one that basically ended up having the, the same thing happen to him last season. Jordan Howard signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. Miles Sanders was there. Now, Jordan Howard had a pretty decent run to start the season, but ultimately it was Miles Sanders' job by the time we got to the end of the year. It was an injury that ended up doing that to him for the most part. But Jordan Howard in 2019, he did have 525 yards on 119 carries. Right now, his ADP sits at... 131.3. He's the running back 48. Running back 48 off the board. Will Miami end up taking a running back? More than likely, yes. I would not be surprised if they took a running back. However, right now with that type of ADP, if you're doing any type of drafts this early, he's a guy that I would still invest in a little bit. Since his rookie season in 2016, he has 3,895 rushing yards, third most in the NFL out of all running backs during that time span. He's also scored at least six rushing touchdowns each season since 2016. So he is right now top 10 in most rushing touchdowns since 2016 as well. Last year, five Miami running backs had at least 30 rushing attempts to go around, okay? So it was, I mean, there's a few running backs on the roster there in Miami. We talked about it on our mock drafts this year so far, and yeah, I, I do believe that Miami's going to invest in a running back. However, they have so many there already. What if a running back just doesn't fall into a good place for them and they say, eh, maybe we take a late round pick or they just invest elsewhere and all of a sudden Jordan Howard is the guy that's that's leading the charge there in Miami. Could have some really, really good implications for him fantasy-wise. And then also a couple of low-key signings, Eric Flowers and Ted Carreras in free agency coming over to Miami. Eric Flowers is definitely one to, to kind of keep in mind. And the reason for that is is because He's a former first-round draft pick that did not do well in New York. However, last season goes to Washington, moves to guard from tackle, and had a pretty darn good season. Ends up turning it into a contract here with the Miami Dolphins. I also fully expect them to use one of those first, uh, one of those, one of the three first-round picks that they have if they don't end up moving up. Use it on an offensive lineman as well. So if they do that, then they have some really, really good strength on the offensive line for Jordan Howard to run behind. So he's number one. Again, obviously, if Miami takes a running back in the first round, second round, wherever it may end up being, he could ultimately end up outworking Jordan Howard. But last season, Jordan Howard did pretty darn good to begin the year. All of his 2019 stats were before week nine. During that time frame, he actually ended up starting the four games prior to going down with his injury. During that time, he had 16.5 attempts per game, 69.5 rushing yards per game, 4.19 yards per attempt. So Jordan Howard's always been a volume guy. If you, if you, if you get volume with Jordan Howard, you're going to get some decent numbers. So even if they were to draft a running back, Howard could still be the guy to start the year. Okay, 
Now, next up, a guy that is confusing me a little bit right now. Damian Williams last year was a first and second round pick in a lot of leagues. After Kareem Hunt was out in Kansas City, Damian Williams was looked at as being the starter last year. Didn't end up working out that way. Okay, Only 498 yards, averaged 4.5 yards per carry, 5 touchdowns. But for a guy that basically was looked at as the starter in Kansas City last year, going in basically the, the second round, I did see him go late first in some, but around that second round area, right now he's got an ADP of 98.1, the running back 36 off the board. I have no idea why people have fallen on him. Last year, no, I'm not investing a second round pick in Damian Williams. Will I invest a a pick for him in the 98th area? Uh, Yeah, absolutely I would. I don't care if Kansas City drafts a running back. I'll invest in Damian Williams this early at that point. Again, though, yeah, maybe they do spend an early pick on a running back. And then at that point, you, you have your guy. But with Damian Williams, I'm starting to get a little bit of a feeling that he could end up being the guy this year. He's only got a year left on the contract, so he's probably going to be gone pretty soon. So, yeah, maybe they do get somebody to to follow that up. But for everybody that they have on the roster there, they have a ton of them. But first, just to talk about Damian Williams again real quick, week 16 through the Super Bowl, five total games. Again, dealt with injuries throughout the year, some inconsistencies. But the last five games of the season – Running back two, dude was a monster. Dude was a monster. 71 attempts, 385 rush yards, 30 targets, 18 receptions, 151 yards, nine total touchdowns during that span. It was the final... It was the final few games that he during the regular season that he was the running back two and half PPR. But the stats down there below week 16 through the Super Bowl, those are where those stats are from. That wording might be a little confusing. I apologize about that. But week 16 through the Super Bowl, those are those stats. But the in the season, the last couple of weeks of the season, he was the running back two and half PPR. Again, tons of running backs on the roster. Elijah McGuire. Darwin Thompson, DeAndre Washington, Mike Weber, Damian Williams, Darian Williams. Do we really, I mean, with all those running backs on the roster, do they really need to add somebody? I'm not so sure. If they don't, Damian Williams definitely becomes a guy that we're going to be taking a deeper look at. But right now you can get him super cheap, which it just, it still confuses me because of where he was at last year. Where he was at last year in the ADP, for him to be significantly lower than that and basically be the same exact situation, is uh, it's a killer. It's a killer. I don't know what I don't know why people are fading him right now. But again, if you're doing any drafts or if you're in like dynasty leagues and you're trying to trade right now, you probably can get him decently cheap before the draft. And if you do get him cheap and they do draft a running back, oh well, not that big of a deal. But he was he was the guy in the playoffs and did an excellent job. Now to the part that might get me fired. Jake watches all these episodes, so there's no keeping this from him. He knows that Ronald Jones is going to be in this episode. But again, I'm not going to be done touting Ronald Jones right now until I see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft a running back. If they do, then I'll stop talking about Ronald Jones. But for right now, for me, still got to talk about him. Not a great season last year. 724 yards, average just over 4.2 yards per carry, six touchdowns. Right now, an ADP of 109.6. He's the running back, 39. He did some things last year that are a little bit under the radar. His yards after contact per attempt was 2.69. That was 20, or that was 16th in the NFL. So he was right there in the middle of running backs in terms of his yards after contact per attempt. Now remember, this was a really bad offensive line last year. It was an offensive line that would let people get to him a little bit early. So he he did have to try and break a lot of tackles. He didn't have a whole lot of running room. His elusiveness rating was 11th in the NFL. This is over on Pro Football Focus. His elusiveness rating was 59.8. And what the elusiveness rating is, it's basically how hard a, how hard was it to bring down a runner independent of the blocking that was in front of him? So if you take out the blocking that was happening, how was he doing in terms of breaking those tackles and getting away from those tacklers? Okay, that's that's pretty darn good right there. Again, for especially, again, if you take out all the offensive line stuff, he was making some things happen on his own. What could he do if he is the guy? No more Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber's not there to take his touches anymore. What if Ronald Jones is the guy? 
What if Tampa Bay upgrades that offensive line? And what are we going to do if Tom Brady helps with some of those stacked boxes? He saw a stacked box 26.16% of the time. With Tom Brady there being there, Tom Brady's going to be more reliable than what Jameis Winston was. Will he air it out down the field as much as Jameis Winston did? Probably not. Okay, that's probably not going to happen. But Tom Brady will probably be safer. More than likely, teams are going to respect that passing game a little bit. Last year, because of how many interceptions James Jameis Winston threw, sometimes you would see some stacked boxes and them cue on the run a little bit because most teams are like, our defensive backs can handle this. Like Winston isn't going to burn us too often. If he does, we're going to make up for it with a pick later on, or he's going to end up making some sort of a mistake. So this year with Tom Brady, who's going to be a little bit safer with the ball, not going to throw nearly as many interceptions, will be uh, will definitely be a lot better in terms of just reliability. It can make some things happen, people. I know the motto on the channel is hashtag say no to Rojo. But for right now, I got to buy Rojo a little bit. Because if he ends up being the guy there, if they don't invest a high pick in running back, then we're looking at a guy that that could end up being at least a high-end running back too. I said it. I said it. If we get out of the draft this coming week and Ronald Jones is the main guy there in Tampa, we got to go get him as much as possible, people. It, I mean, this will end up being the season. No, he's not that good, but there's some numbers there to, to suggest that if he gets a good offensive line with Tom Brady there to help a quarterback now, he could, he could end up putting up some decent numbers next year. So there you have it. My three running backs to really kind of take a look at right now. Right now, again, good values. And the draft can change everything. And that's why I wanted to put this video out now. Because, again, prior to the draft, these are guys to keep an eye on. Now, things can happen. Things can change in the draft. So make sure you keep an eye out as we get closer to the season, our must-have sleeper video. This is way too early sleepers. So many things can change. But we get closer to the season, we're going to talk about our must-have sleepers. And those are the guys that you will 100% want to invest in in your fantasy leagues. Ladies and gentlemen of Headliner Nation, do me a favor. If you appreciated the content, hit that like button down below. And then also leave us a comment. Who are you looking at right now as kind of a way too early sleeper that, that might have some things change? Do you think Rojo could end up being a guy that we invest in in 2020? Maybe, maybe. More importantly, though, if you're new to this channel, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen anything here from the Fantasy Headliners before, hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on your bell notifications. We're going to be live on Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. for the first round of the NFL Draft, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you come hang out with Jake and I as we talk about the NFL Draft and break down all of the picks for you as they happen. Hello, Inter Nation. Thanks so much for tuning into another episode, and I will catch you on the next one. Have a great one. Stay safe. Love you all.